Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I thought I'd do a, a video right from the shoot I'm doing in uh, Atlanta for Vice TV. And I thought I'd talk to you guys about some of the shoots I did or some of the TV shows I did. Because a lot of people have been asking about that. How much TV do you do? Do you go on a lot? Stuff like that. If you haven't seen some of my stuff, you make sure you go check it out. And a lot is in the playlist. But before I get started, please check us out on the YouTube member program, our Patreon member program. New merch coming up, really cool. You guys know all about my book, Gangster Redemption, as well. Let me jump right into this video. You know, I actually got my start uh, doing TV. I was one of the experts on the Casey Anthony trial. Casey Anthony was a girl who killed her kid. She ended up getting away to murder. It was in Central Florida, it was in the Orlando area. And I was one of the analysts on TV. And I had such a different view of the whole case than the defense attorneys. Uh, obviously, you know, when she got convicted, she got convicted, she only did a short time in jail. She got convicted for not the murder of her daughter. She ended up getting convicted for something else. Uh, her name is Casey Anthony. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy because she literally killed her kid and they ended up finding the kid later. And her, her attorney was Jose Bias who I ended up getting to know, a nice guy, great defense attorney. He's in South Florida, actually. And he was a, pu a public de a public defender, I think, and uh, ended up turning out to be one of the good lawyers, you know. Uh, he was a new lawyer. I don't think he was a public defender at that point. So it, that this, that's the Casey Anthony case. That was really, but you know, my first foray into actually even anything to do with the media was when I did a radio show. I had my own radio show in a local station in Brevard County when I got out of prison. And a friend of mine, buddy, my Joe, says to me, he goes, Larry, you're a natural. I listen to you, you just, you just talk. And you know, I always thought of TV and the media as just be yourself. You know, tell it like it is. I don't give a shit. I look at the camera and say, listen, everybody on the other side of that camera, they put their pants on the same way I do. They are just like me. Obviously, different people, we're all different, but in the big picture, it, we're all the same, and we really are, and I look at that in, in that regard. So I don't get nervous. People ask me all the time about that. Do I get nervous on TV? Not at all. It doesn't bother me. Nothing bothers me like this. Hey, listen, when you lived in a prison cell that's, a, you know, 6 by 8 or 8 by 10 or whatever the hell the cells were, because different ones were different sizes, and you're in the hole for three years, uh, 11 straight months, you don't give a shit about too much. Uh, you can't, you know, I, I don't get intimidated, I don't get nervous. Obviously, there are things you get nervous about. You know, I was just doing this TV show, and I'm here in Atlanta, like I said, and I'm doing a TV show shoot for Vice TV. And I think the show is an hour show on me, and it's be, it's called I Was a Teenage Felon. And, and we're in a warehouse area. We're in a warehouse area in some place in Atlanta, around the area of Atlanta. And uh, so we, we took our RV up here, my brother and I, and my brother's actually in doing his part of the show right now. The show is on me, and uh, so they highlight. And I ended up filming yesterday for seven hours, six and a half hours, seven hours. It, it, and it's a long day, people. You guys don't understand that. But, you know, as a, I guess I can consider myself a professional. Uh, I, I know how they do it. I know the cuts. I know when sounds right or wrong. And they tell me, hold. I know you. And it's hard. That's the hard part, picking up. You guys see my videos on YouTube, and, and I just roll. You hear me, and Larry just talks. It's not, you know, professionally produced, so to speak. I think we're getting better. I hope we are. And, uh, but I, I, you know, in, in the regards of that, so I enjoy doing the media. You know, a couple of media things I wanted to tell you about, which is pretty cool. I did a show, I did The Daily Show. The Daily Show is with Jon Stewart. What a great show. It's a Comedy Central show. It's on at, at 11 o'clock. Right now, it's got uh, Trevor Noah is the host. But when I did it, it was John, uh, John Stewart. And I ended up first going out, they ended up taking me to Montana to an empty prison. And they were doing a whole skit on, on the prison systems or whatever it was. And they wanted me, they found me online and stuff like that. And they ended up doing that show. And they were trying out a new correspondent. You know, correspondents, that's what they do in The Daily Show. And they didn't like them. And they didn't use, they didn't use any of what they sent us out. Hotels, plane rides, you know, food, everything is done. Bringing me out there, the whole works. But Jon Stewart saw the clip of me inside the uh, jail doing this stuff. And he goes, 
forget this guy. I want Larry. I want him to do a clip. So they signed me with John Oliver. John Oliver has a show uh, last week tonight on HBO now, but he was a correspondent on The Daily Show. And John Oliver and I did a, a, a shoot and uh, a skit. It, it, and I yell at these Harvard and MBA students. Being ethical is not something that you learn from signing a piece of paper. You know, I'm gonna tell you something I learned in prison. You got seven extra inches in your anal canal to hide some. Let me ask you, you think you know what prison's all about? You better go to the shower with your boots on. You and don't and you don't go with your friends, they're gonna shank come and shank you. your ass. You like that? That's You're what's gonna really get shanked in the shower. You Shut up. It's one of the funniest clips they did that year. I yell at these Harvard and MBA students, and they honestly wouldn't sign an ethics oath, and they really didn't know who I was. They they built a breakaway suit for me. It was really cool. Then, uh, you know, even to go to deeper into that, I did another uh, clip called the uh, the Daily Show A Team, and that was with Samantha B. She's another correspondent, went on, she has her own show too, I think on TBS or, or one of the networks. Uh, and uh, Samantha B's funny too, and we did this clip, we did this show on a guy, <laughs> a guy got, a Bo Deedle, who's a detective in New York, and he's a famous detective, he goes in movies too, and he's actually a detective, uh, you know, he's on private eye now, and he got guns stolen out of his office. So when he got guns stolen out of his office, I'm the one who did the, the, the uh, me, a guy named Louis Ferrante and Frank Luntz, we were the A-team coming in to find out who did this, who got this guy, who got this uh, guns taken, and how he got it. And it was the cleaning crew and all that. It really wasn't. It's all skit. All that kind of stuff it, it is funny. Continuing on a, on a media career, if you want to consider that, you know, how you get your media career, if that's, you know, I never looked at it as a media career. I never looked at it, okay, Larry, you're going to be a media star. Larry, this is what you need to do. You know, go get an agent, go do this. It's funny because when I first did start, you know, I, I first built my company. I built the Reality Chick program, which is helping kids. And you all know about that. And I love to do that. I love to open people's eyes. Obviously, I do a lot of prison reform and stuff of that nature. And that's my passion. Everybody knows that. That is my biggest passion. I don't want to see people go to prison. That's the biggest thing for me. So anyway, I did that. I built that. And I kept working that. And I did love that. And I kept doing TV. And what I, what ha what I mean by that is TV. People would ask me, especially with robberies, you know, as being known as the biggest jewel robber in the United States, I got called a lot whenever a robbery happened. When Kim Kardashian got robbed in France, I think it was France or England or wherever, she got robbed of $10 million worth of stuff or something of $15 million worth of jewels. I predicted how what happened and I was right on. Larry, thank you for your time. You believe someone in the Kardashian camp was behind this. What makes you so certain? Well, I wouldn't just say it's the Kardashian camp. It could have been someone from the Paris uh, show, the fashion show. Could have been someone at the airport. Could have been someone at the hotel. I also predicted there was a big robbery in, in uh, I think it was France. It was $136 million in a briefcase. Literally, that's why people used to ask me, hey Larry, why'd you rob diamonds? Because I could put $136 million in a briefcase yeah, you're going to get 30 cents on a dollar, but figure that number out. What's that? $40 million, more than that, $45 million in cash you're going to get. Now, where can you pick up 40, $45 million in cash? You can. So it was kind of like pretty cool that they bring me in all the time. Now, there's a gang in England they call the Pink Panther Gang, and they're, they're professional crew. And they do a uh, brazen crew, you know, I hate to say respect, but a lot of respect the way they do things. They got the cojones, the balls, and they know what they're doing, and they're smart about it. So they do everything that way. So in that regard, I'm like, wow, these guys are good. And whenever they did a robbery, they, they went, uh, one time they, they, they drilled a hole through a vault outside over a weekend, and they got $100 million worth of stuff. So here I am on TV talking about that on ABC, CBS, NBC. They didn't just pick a jewelry place and say, hey, let's rob this place and plan it out that much. There right. has no, to be an inside connection. So not only and, though, not only though, and then I think the word was audacious that, that British police use, the fact that they, they did this once, they then returned for a second night to steal even more jewels. 
Well, you know, that doesn't shock me, uh, Brooke, because once you secure the place and you know your time frames and you know when cops are coming and if they got you or not, yes, you might be on edge, but a professional is not going to. So I became one of the Fox co uh, uh, correspondents on all things to do with crime and young people. And uh, so what happened with them is they call me into their daily, they have a show in the mornings in Central Florida, Fox Local at that point. And they brought me in all the time to talk about young people and kids and things like that, uh, that always made me uh, want to give my message out. My goal was never to be a media star. My goal was to actually get awareness to the broken system we have in policing, broken system we have in the criminal justice system. I'm one of the first people who called for uh, police to be more community minded. I still am big on that and we have, sadly, we still, 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 right now, we still have police that are fighting community policing. Or they're not fighting it, but they keep doing the same thing over and over. And what do you call someone who keeps doing the same thing over and over and getting the same result? Yeah, that's crazy. That's the sign of an idiot. I love it. One police department, they got together. We're going to do a whole new thing. So they put together a group of cops to figure this out. I said, you can't do that. You can't have a bunch of cops doing that. You need people like myself, community people, to be involved. You can't just get their input and say, I'm going to write the whole shit. You got to get them to write the stuff. You got to get them to be involved. You can't just get a person to, to, to think, oh, well, we're the cops. We know everything. You don't know everything. You don't know everything, cops. I respect good cops. People who know me know I respect good cops. I never said defund the cops because I don't believe in that. I think they spend their money stupid. Whenever I see a small police department with a tank or a, a special vehicle and all this bullshit, how much do you use that? How much money is it taking? Oh, it was donated. No, it wasn't. What about the man hours? What about the maintenance? What about the training on that vehicle? You know, it's a waste of money and it's, and it's not their money. You know, cops still gotta get it through their head. That's my money. I'm a citizen. I'm a taxpayer. That's my money. And it's our money, it's the people's money that we, we need to, to fight for. And too many people or too many cops are stuck on stupid. Now, a lot of them aren't. And there's a lot of good cops. I work with a good police chief in my community. Can he get better? Obviously, everybody can get better. I can get better. But I think he's willing to learn. I've talked to him many times. Uh, I'd like to talk to him more always. I think also, we have other people in our community that, that, that are just stuck, just stuck. Maybe they come from an old school and it's, I'm the police, I got the star on my sh fucking chest. I'm the cops. That's bullshit. It, get, it, it, it goes me crazy. But uh, getting back to the media, because obviously becoming a media, uh, I guess, personality and now a YouTube personality, uh, you know, it gives you a platform to try to help people, to try to make people better. And that is my goal. I always try to make as much positivity as I can with what I do. I, I never end my videos in a negative way. My videos are all positive. My videos are about you making good choices out there. You might have made mistakes, everybody. We all did. Look at me. You're going to see this on the, the show they're doing right in here. They're doing it. You can see some pictures right here. This is the show I just did. and. Uh, and you're gonna see this soon, and we'll, we'll let you know when it's coming out and all that. But I really do believe we need to be more community-minded in life and people and everything we're doing, everybody. We need to be more community-minded. We, I mean, just as a, as, as, as a people, as a people, you know, the reason, I, you know, the reason the whole was so bad for me is because I'm a social person. The guys who know me here, I love, uh, if, if you're on Patreon and I call you, uh, I don't just call you for a minute or two. You know that. I, I, I hang out. I want to know things. I like people. That's just the, my nature, and that's, I think, most people's nature. And, you know, yes, you could be a loner, but you're really not totally a loner, whether you're a gamer or whether you're doing something at home. We are social people, and we all go through a lot of problems in life. But if, if maybe the media has helped me, uh, get my message out, which it has. I, I enjoy doing it. I'm not scared of a camera. We all know that. And, and I think it's important that we all uh, do different things. 
uh, to keep positive and do what we're doing. And I, I look at that in that kind of way. So, you know, as far as a media guy, um, I guess doing a video on the media, I, I, I just want to say, you know, without you guys, without the support, without the likes, without the passing on, without the sharing of my videos, without the comments, uh, I couldn't do what I did. It would do. I couldn't do what I do. And I, and I really want to thank you guys out there. Uh, please pass it on, obviously. Uh, just, just another guy's story on how he got to the media and how he wants to help the world and change the world. I really think we all need to do that in some little way. Just some little way. I hope you think about how you can change the world. Because you can. Don't think one person doesn't matter. I never believed that and I still don't believe that. And you stay strong. Have a great day, everybody. Please make sure you make good choices out there. That's what it's all about. Have a good life. Make good choices. Live your life. And have fun. Take care, everybody.